welcome back to medicine made easy with me kavya tendal now we will be continuing with complications of chronic subcutaneous media that is the intratemporal complications pterocytis the name pterocytis says that is inflammation of the pterous part of the temporal bone you know pterous part of temporal bone has middle ear inner ear and mastodontum now already what are inflamed middle ear and mastodontum now which is not inflamed is the inner ear now it has to go through inflammation has to go through inner ear and reach the pterous apex that's it now when you take the pterous part of temporal bone it has diploic marrow sclerotic part and pneumatic part but pneumatic as such only 30 percentage right see you see the infection spreading through this but as you think the infection is not spreading through this itself it has a separate root and that is the reason behind why a person cannot developing labyrinthitis that means if you have a doubt that infection has to spread through the inner ear and inner ear is in peter's temporal bone why cannot it cause labyrinthitis only pterocytis from here is going to spread completely inside but it is not causing labyrinthitis why only pterocytis if you are in, if your doubt is that your answer is the tracts because the infection going to spread through postero superior tract and antero inferior tract the postero superior tract is passing above the bony labyrinth and antero inferior tract as the name suggest anterior to the anterior wall inferior from the inferior part so hypotympanum around the anterior around the eustachian tube it is going to develop and it has reached through the peter apex after reaching the peter apex it can involve the cranial nerves apart from that it can cause epidural abscess what is epidural abscess see the word epi does mean on or upon dural means the dura that is the meninges see this is the uh, periosteum of uh, um, peter apex whenever there is inflammation of this abscess collects here that means on the dura this is the dura so it collects on the dura that is called as epidural abscess or extradural abscess to say the types of uh, dura it is periosteal and meningeal dura meningeal dura combines with arachnoid uh, meninges and uh, periosteal is the one that is going to attach to the bone this part is maximized here now what are the other things can present that is whenever the infection is spreading through the peter apex it can involve the 6th nerve and 5th nerve 6th nerve in the rolos canal and 5th nerve in the trigeminal cave it can getting it can get involved so 6th nerve involvement what cause diplopia 5th nerve involvement it can cause retro orbital pain then on the course it can injure 8th nerve and because of uh, acute otitis media and chronic um, um, otitis media it can involve the 7th uh, nerve also the clinical presentation will be according to the nerve involvement by 6th nerve it is diplopia 5th nerve retro orbital pain and because of the persistent uh, inflammation and infection being present uh, even after uh, mastoiditis so if at all uh, diagnosis of acute collateral mastoiditis is made and uh, pterocytosis is not made out even post operatively there will be persistent ear discharge if at all there is persistent ear discharge post operatively and diplopia retroperitoneal pain is present then it does uh, signify there can be underlying pterocytosis that is this presentation is called gradinugo syndrome person with gradinugo syndrome cannot have all these features all the time uh, coming to clinical features as we know in middle ear mastoid inner ear pterous apex all are affected so middle ear um, like Uh, seventh nerve can be injured, so lower uh, motor neuron palsy can be seen in facial nerve. Mastoid, yeah, obviously that will be associated acute collateral mastoiditis features. Inner ear, there can be recurrent vertigo as the clinical feature recurrent vertigo, and eighth nerve uh, injury can lead to sensorineural hearing loss, and as well vertigo because of eighth nerve involvement. Next is Peter's apex involvement, as you already seen. There can be diplopia, and there can be um, retroperitoneal pain. Apart from that, there can be persistent ear discharge, accounting for this um, tract and uh, discharge present inside that. Next is coming to management. Management is simple. Uh, IV antibiotic is initially started because this infection, and then it is continued for four to five days. Even after symptom disappear, we need to give this antibiotic. Next is uh, this tract we have seen no antero antero inferior and posterior superior tract. They should be uh, curated. and uh, enlarged so that the pus can be easily drained out that is one thing and we can do mastoidectomy that can be a cortical or a modified radical mastoidectomy or radical mastoidectomy 
and uh, what is this trotman's triangle why it is related to petrocytes is the postero superior tract right this postero superior tract is actually going to start in this uh, trotman triangle or the attic okay so that is the here that is the need to remember the trotman triangle the boundaries are so here inferiorly the sigmoid sinus then the superior petrocell sinus and the solid angle the solid angle superior petrocell sinus and sigmoid sinus all to the forms the trotman triangle actually when you uh, approach the Trotman triangle, we can uh, enter the posterior cranial fossa. So from here in near here, we can directly access to the posterior cranial fossa. That is one point to remember um, the Trotman triangle. Hope I made my point clear. To summarize, petrocytes is inflammation of the petrous apex. There are two tracts: posterior superior tract and anterior inferior tract. And uh, there is something called Gardenegger syndrome, persistent otorrhea, diplopia, intraorbital pain. We can see all the features related to involvement. HRCT can be done to find the body details and MRI as usual. These are the cranial nerves which is getting involved. 6th, uh, 8th and 7th. Uh, then management is IV antibiotics. Curate the tracts, enlarge it to mastoidectomy. And uh, uh, knowing the anatomy of Trotman triangle will make us uh, more strong in operating the post superior tract. So that's it. Hope I made my points clear. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like, uh, share and uh, comment your views in the comment section. Thank you so much. We will meet in the next video. Till then, stay tuned.